researching. Uh, I understand you're going to be researching uh, history, plant and animal life. Is this true? Yeah. And so that's going to be wonderful. It's going to be a great learning experience for you as well. Um, the history of Milligan Mills is very rich in people in their lifestyles. People long ago, they had no tablets, no cell phones, no computers. They had no way of doing a digital presentation like you guys are doing. Um, back then, there were kids. Uh, how old are you? Nine? Ten? ten. ten. Sorry, ten. Okay. Um, the kids your age had jobs back then. They didn't go to school. They had jobs. Uh, they would take like a, a team of horses. They would walk them up probably two or three miles when the horses needed shoes. And then they had to bring them back, feed them. So they, they had really difficult jobs. Um, I think to give you a deeper perspective of Milligan Mills, I have invited Mr. Charlie Milligan, who he's got a family history that goes back to the 1600s. And he knows the people. He has a family tree that shows it. And best of all, he has some pictures, photographs from long ago, and they're going to take you all back in time because we have some surprises for you. So now I'd like to introduce Mr. Charlie Milligan. Thank you very much. You're welcome. How's everyone this morning? Good. 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 I brought a couple of tools that they use in the mill, and I'll explain them to you in a few minutes. Uh, my great grandfather, Michael Milligan, built the brick house. If you all had a chance to go up and look at the brick house, yeah, yeah. Sure you haven't gone up. Anybody seen, seen it? I've seen a picture. Yeah. Uh, he built that back in 1834 when he was 15. So five years from now, you can build a brick house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I brought a, a copy of my family tree, which kind of tells the history of the Melicans in the state of Maine. And it starts with uh, Hugh Melican, who was the first grandfather of mine, who came from Scotland over to this country in about 1665. So that goes back quite a few years. Uh, a family tree, anybody know what a family tree is? Yeah. Excellent, then you probably recognize one as big as this. <laughs> but this family tree brings the, the Millican men all the way down to my children and the names of the grandmothers that they married all the way down through to my wife. So it's quite extensive. The little green dots represent the people that I actually have photographs of. And it doesn't go back too far because when you get back to uh, Robert Jameson and some of those people, they, they didn't have photography. So there weren't any pictures available, unfortunately. I'll uh, put this on display up there. It's kind of hard to hold out straight, but if anyone wants to take a look at it. That's what it looks like. Pretty big, huh? Wow. Lots of generations. Lots. Amazing. <laughs> I also brought a few photographs. I know history can be a little boring, and uh, rather than you know talk a great deal about this old grandfather and that old grandfather, I thought maybe it would be better if you could see some photographs uh, that may interest you. The uh, first Millican that they say that came to America was Hugh Millican, and his son John came to Scarborough in about 1710. And he married a girl named Elizabeth Alger, bought a thousand acres of land from his father's estate, and sort of started the Millican family tree in Maine. Uh, about three, four grandfathers later, Isaiah Parker Millican bought the land at the mill pond. And at the time, it had a grist mill running on it. Anybody know what a grist mill is? What's a grist mill do? Grist mill is Yeah, that's a water wheel. A, a grist mill has large, round, 
granite stones. And the water wheel that you're talking about turns these stones. And if they put corn in between the stones, it turns it into cornmeal. And if they put wheat in the stones, it turns it into baking flour, like you'd make a loaf of bread with. <coughs> and there were actually three grist mills, one at the mill pond and two further down on the Little River. And uh, he built a house sort of up behind the brick house where the, you know where the new housing development is going in up there? He built a house up there, a log cabin actually, in 1798. And unfortunately it burned in 1803. So we built another log cabin across the street from where the brick house stands now. And they lived there until the brick house was completed in 1834. Sometime in that history, in, they only used the lumber mill and the grist mill in the spring because that was the only time there was enough water power to get the stones to turn. And early one spring, they were grinding corn for a farmer up on the flag pond road. And when they went up to deliver it, the wood stove that they had running in the mill to keep themselves warm burned the mill down. <laughs> and. Uh, Isaiah then got thinking, he was a sea captain as well, and he used to be the captain of a schooner that delivered lumber down to Pennsylvania, Boston, New York, and some of the bigger cities. And he thought, well, instead of building another grist mill, I think I'll build a lumber mill, because I can sell my own lumber and transport it and make more money than I can transporting other things. So that was the reason the lumber mill got built. Any questions at all? Uh, yeah, all set. Uh, I'll show you a picture. This is a photograph of Michael Milliken. He's the one on the left, and his brother Benjamin. And Michael Milliken was born in 1918 and died in 1906. And from the age of the gentleman in here, I would assume this picture was probably taken around 1900. So that means it's about 115 years old. So it's an old photograph. Yeah. You said he was born in 1918. How could he yeah, die? 1818, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, 1819, he was born. Yeah, good, good pick up. <laughs> and, uh, so he lived from 1819 to 1906. Almost and, 100. That's yeah, he lived to be an old gentleman back yeah. before there was really any medicine or anything, you know? Right. But I think they ate the right kind of food back then. <laughs> nice long life at that time. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm just saying that's a nice long life at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I'm kind of fortunate that that's the case with yeah. most all my grandfathers. <laughs> it's good for um, you, right? It's going to continue, but <laughs> you can only hope. Uh, this is a fairly small picture of the first lumber mill. If you want to kind of look at that, that lumber mill was the first one that they built after the grist mill had burned down. And then about 50 or 60 years later, the business was doing so well, they modernized the mill and actually made it even larger. And this is a photograph of that. So you might want to take a look at it around the other side. It's such a quiet corner now. That looks like a big building. Well, you know, back in, in 1870 was when that whole corner was at its peak industrial-wise. And there were 140 people working there. So it's kind of hard to look at it now and imagine what a bustling area that had yeah. to have been. Uh, this is a modern picture of the mill pond. Notice it's in color, which none of these are. <laughs> uh, this picture was taken obviously in the fall about four or five years ago. And this is a photograph taken around 1900 of the mill full, pond full of logs. Kind of a different photograph. Looks different than the East Student, and This little peninsula, if you're standing on the road where the big culvert is, looking up the pond, this little peninsula that's sticking out here is still visible. So you kind of get a reference as to where this photograph was taken. This is probably my favorite. This is a photograph of some of the men that were logging. And there's a couple of oxen in the picture. There's a dog named Max that was my father's dog. <laughs> this gentleman here is my father when he was about 15 years old. And the one in the back with the gray and the uh, straw hat is my grandfather. 
My grandfather, by the way, lived in a house that sat on this property after he married Fanny Jameson. So. Is that why it's Jameson Hill Road? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jameson family goes back as far as the building. Yeah. And the but that's farm, a great picture there. Yeah. And the farm stretched all the way down to the beach, you know, well, the land, and all the way back to Route 1. It was farm. tremendous. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But back in those days, I mean, the Millicans uh, between Old Dutch and Scarborough and Saco owned so about 2,400 acres of woodland. And that was, to them, that was essentially nothing more than inventory. So, I mean, they needed lots of trees and lots of logs to keep their lumber mill running. So they bought land, probably about 50 cents an acre, I would assume, uh, and bought huge tracts of land for, for logging. This particular picture is a company that used to be up there that most people don't know about, and it was called the Box Factory. And the Box Factory used to take the boards, cut them down really thin, and they made wooden boxes that actually folded down so that they were only about three inches tall when they were folded. And they were sent by the Eastern Railroad down to Florida for orange crates. And if you look at the picture here, there are a number of men in the picture, but the front row was mostly kids your age. And these kids worked for about 10 cents an hour, 10 hours a day, six days a week. It's, it's only a dollar a day. Yeah. That's building right. the boxes. Building, the, and they were doing the actual sewing. And they've got the board. And they have pictures of saws that they were working with and all kinds of equipment. And it was a dangerous life for young children back then. The and they, they definitely worked long hours. and had a lot of chores to do at home when they got home, feed chickens, you know, feed pigs, milk cows. Did they uh, like it? Well, my dad lived that life and uh, as a kid and he loved it. It's so, what they knew. It's what they knew. How did they get to the box factory to work there? Did the box walk? factory was, not, uh, was just on the other side of the road from the milk. This, uh, yeah, yeah. Was it the logs as a kid? Well, I don't know if it was the logs. It was something. I mean, children were thought of as late. And one of the reasons why a lot of the people in the old days had large families is because they had such big farms that they needed a lot of labor to run the farms, and children were the cheapest labor they could find. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't against the law to have children working. It well, wasn't, no. They didn't have to go to school. Absolutely. It was a way of life. Well, I mean, they, they worked all day. It's later on, they, they did go to school. Uh, let's get the picture of the box factory with the young children in the front. The, uh, the second one in is actually my father's brother, uh, Charlie James, you know, Charlie Milk, and I was named after him. And, uh, yeah. With, with his arms crossed? Does the box Yeah, the little guy there, I think he's just sitting out. He's, uh, it's a box This little guy here. The second one. No. Over. With the hat on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he died. No. He spent no. spinal meningitis when he was 18 years old and a senior at Hebron Academy. So that was a rather tragic part of the story. What was your question? Meningitis, a, that's a disease that back then they had. It's a spinal disease. Yeah. It is fatal. Uh, it was back in those days. But, uh, this uh, photograph is a photograph of the Jameson farm, which actually set where we're standing now, or sitting now. Uh, this little girl here is my father's sister who was born in 1900. And based on her, Appearance and age, we think the picture is about 1900 uh, or about 1905 because she looks like she's about five years old in this picture. This one is attached to the glass, so I'm not going to pass it around, but I will lay it up here if anybody wants to see it. it uh, That's where you're this, standing this, now. This yeah. yeah. This is this be a big farm. This is Fanny Jameson. This is that's where the school is now. Yeah. The land, so not the actual yeah. building. Oh. That's the new yes. building. And, and this is a picture of so Fanny Jameson and my grandfather. Five? And it was Very taken on their 50th wedding anniversary. Wow. <laughs>
almost looks like preparations for a funeral instead of a, you know, all the big baskets of flowers. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put your bag down and sit. There you go, Kel. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.